Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl, and today I want to show you how to style different types of knit and crochet vests. You can make them in a number of ways, either it's top-down, raglan-shaped, side-to-side. Specifically, we're going to talk about the really unstructured draping vests because you can really style them in so many different ways, and it it doesn't really take a whole lot of skills to be able to make them. And what I mean by that is that they can be made by somebody who is a beginner to an intermediate crocheter. You do not have to know about shaping and making sweaters to make things fit. They're basically a rectangular wrap that has two armholes in them. And that's predominantly what we're going to be talking about today. Hi Karen, thanks for watching. Thank you to anybody who decides to join me live today. If you end up watching this in a playback, please remember to click the uh, notifications button so that you can be notified the next time that I go live. However you decide to do it is absolutely up to you because I do get notifications even if you leave a comment after it's no longer live and I'm happy to reply to any questions then. At the end of this broadcast, I will be sharing links in the video description to let you know where all of these patterns are. Every one of the vests that I'll be talking about today is a free pattern on my website featuring any number of my beautiful yarns. Let's see who else is here. Hello, Angela. Thanks for watching this morning. Uh, I don't know if you can tell how gloomy it is outside here but I barely squeezed out a little photo shoot this morning. Tomorrow is my deadline for submitting my pattern, charts, and photography to the Knit Show for the beautiful project that I flew all the way to Austin, Texas earlier this month to be able to demo on the show. And if you haven't signed up for the Knit Show notifications on YouTube, I'll post a link to that as well. The show will be live October 5th. And I have a question for you. Has anybody set up any viewing parties yet? I'm thinking about inviting all of my Knit and Crochet Club members who meet every Tuesday evening in North Naples. And I'm thinking about inviting everybody to a viewing party. I'm not sure which day of the week October 5th is yet. Hi, Elisa. I'm talking about you right now. She's one of the women that comes to my Knitting and Crochet Club every week. And depending on what day October 5th is, we're probably going to do a viewing party so that we can watch some of the brand new season together. And I uh, haven't fleshed out the details yet, but it's going to be fun. So if you have had thoughts about creating a viewing party, let me know what your thoughts are. I'd be interested to hear what kind of theme or what kind of uh, goodies you have planned. Anyway, I suppose it's time to get started. Oh, I can give you a sneak peek. Of. So basically, the reason I mentioned the Knit Show is because I'm showing a vest, a crochet vest, that is in the style that we're going to be talking about today. This particular one uses Be So Fine yarn, and it's a two-all project in pure gold, hand-dyed colorway pure gold. And although I can't talk about that one today, that's the total amount of sneak peek I'll be able to give you, but I am going to show that particular construction style with some of the other vests we'll be talking about today. And just to get started, this is a knit vest that is a free pattern on my website. Also takes two balls of Be So Fine yarn. And this is knit side to side from this shorter edge along here across to the other side. And basically you're creating two large buttonholes for the armholes. You're going to bind off and then cast back on, just like you would for a buttonhole, but in a larger format. Hello, Peggy. Thank you for watching. And yes, Elisa, this is the one you're working on. Uh, so what you'll see here is that the armholes are placed in the top third of the rectangle. And so what I mean is that the top edge that's going to be at your neck, the armholes are close to that edge, and not in the center. And before we go further, what I will show you is a different form. This is a crochet version of the same kind of structure. But do you see how the armholes are in the center from top to bottom? So when I show you these two different techniques, 
I'm going to show you how they can be styled differently. So any, and also, if you think about it, because you're placing where you want those armholes to be, if you prefer the top third construction style or the midpoint construction style, you can change where you put the armholes on any of these projects to make it the type of project that you want to style a certain way. So here's the top third section of the armholes. This is the knit vest, but you could do this in any crochet pattern as well. Basically, you're making a rectangular wrap and then adding armholes so that you can slide your arms into it and have this beautiful layering piece. I don't know about you, but the older I get and sometimes the heavier I get, I feel like layers are definitely the way I feel more comfortable when I leave the house. Anytime you can you know, without covering yourself up. If you wear something too big and too bulky, it makes you look bigger as well. But when you can wear a layer that maybe just covers these bumps or just covers these bumps, there's something more flattering about wearing something that's open so it doesn't look like you're closed off, but still layering over some of those places you don't want to feature. So anyway, this is one way you can wear it, which is obviously just throwing it on and walking out the door. But here's where it gets exciting because, and notice how long it is in the back. Hopefully you can see it's a significantly long piece and it's longer because the armholes are placed in the top third of the wrap. So here's the beauty of this piece though. We're going to take these two front corners and we're going to tie them. And immediately we have turned this from a loose and drapey wrap into something that looks like a fitted vest. And so depending on what size you are, you could be a two, you could be a 12, you could be a 22, it doesn't matter. Once you tie it, it fits to your body. It doesn't matter what size you are. It looks like you've worked on shaping and you've made something that fits, but all you did was make a two dimensional wrap with two armholes. And now here's the front. The front totally looks like a fitted vest and the back still looks the same as it did before. It's nice and long in the back, covers your bum, and I actually think wearing a long flowy top underneath these is really the way to go. I mean, if you wanted to wear something tucked in, that's fine too, but my personal preference is to wear something that's long and flowy. So there's the other way you can wear this piece. Now, you could also if you were so inclined to make ties on here, you could corset tie this all the way down and that would be beautiful. And I'll be showing you a vest later on today that, show, that um, features the corset styling. Uh, one other thing you could do, let's well, one thing you could do because you've got nice big holes on here, you could add a button here and button it and you could choose Okay, <laughs> have my phone ring. And then you could also use a shawl pin and you could pin it. So you could pin it high. Oh, I like that. I really like that with a flowy top coming out of underneath. Or you could pin it low. And then it looks more like a deeper v-neck. Again, we've done no shaping to it. You can change the way the neckline even looks just by where you put a closure on it. And then we'll go back to the original, which is to just wear it open and flowy. Okay, so this is how to wear a vest where you've placed your armholes in the top, in the top third of the rectangle. Now I'm gonna show you how drastically that changes when you place your armholes in the center of the wrap, okay? Here they are in the center of the wrap. Now we're gonna start by throwing it over your shoulders and wearing it super drapey, just like we did the first one. Notice we have more bulk, not more bulk, we have more fabric up here at the neckline because of this. And what that's going to do is either give you a collar to turn over, like a shawl collar, which is super cute, or if you leave it open and just wider, you've created a piece that flows down into the front. Okay, so now this shot, this wrap or vest 
actually has a lot more body in the front. Now if you notice, it's shorter in the back because of where the armholes are. Again, this would be a great time to wear a flowy top underneath and then it gives you those layers and I think that looks super cute as well. Okay, so that's wearing it just open, just open and flowy. Now, if you were to tie this one, that's not the way it looks the best like on the other one. Because there's more bulk in the front, it is a little bulkier tied, but it can be done and it's cute as well. Just I think this particular style is cuter on the other one. But again, you have that shorter piece, so it's just shorter all the way around, which is cute with a flowy top underneath. Okay, this one looks especially good, pinned. So you could use a shawl pin like that. Or if you added a button or two or three to one side and then use these holes on the other side, you could easily button that up as well. Now, are you ready for the most exciting part of this? Let me get rid of a notification here. Okay. So this I found out on accident, which sometimes that's just the best way to figure something out. So I'm gonna hold the top on this side of the armholes and the bottom on this side of the armholes. And it just kind of Just kind of flattens it but what I want you to do is make sure you grab those armholes still okay so we've got it folded in half and one armhole on one side and one on the other okay we're gonna put it back on wait till you see this and now we've created a completely different vest look at this the back is just gorgeous on this one See, hopefully you can see that. Isn't that amazing? So I'll move my hair so you can see where it flips. Now, when you go into this style, this style doesn't work with the top third of the top third armhole construction style. This one works only with the armholes that are in the 50% down the middle. But isn't that gorgeous? I think this could be formal, it could be casual, and then again, if you wanted to corset tie with ties down the front, a button, or use a pin, any of those fastening styles would still work, but I love the amount of coverage you get by just leaving this one open. So this is one of my favorite ways to wear a vest that has armholes in the 50% mark. Okay, just for a quick recap, this is a crochet shawl, a crochet vest pattern that's on my website. I'll put a link in the video description, and this takes two balls of Be So Fine yarn, which is fingering weight bamboo. You can see this beautiful stitch pattern. Okay, and then we have an edging that replicates the lace pattern in the body. Super, super cute. And then the knit counterpart to it was this vest that has armholes in the top third of the rectangle. And these are both side-to-side -side shawls, or side-to-side -side vests. Uh, see what, it's, they're so similar to shawls. They're rectangles with armholes in them. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a couple samples of these done in thicker yarn. This one is crocheted and done in a similar style to this one because it's worked from the center out in both directions okay so we start down the center with foundation ovals and then you work out to the left and you work out to the right separately and in this one if you see we did some increases at the top and the bottom or the beginning and end of each row so that the front would have more body than the back and I'm going to try this on and you notice that the armholes are in the top, closer to the top third. They're not in the center. So now we'll try it on. And you'll see by adding some increases on this line and this line after the armhole, we have more drape in the front. 
which is kind of a hybrid between the two styles that I showed you to start with because on the blue one that had armholes in the top third, you didn't have much body in the front until you tied it. And in the one that had armholes in the center, you had this higher back so that you could see your flowy top underneath, and you also had some body in the front. So this one I would say is like a combination of the two and can easily be worn open. Um, I have found that some customers like to add to the center and make it as wide as it is all the way along. So you would, instead of do shaping from here to here, you would make the entire thing this wide. So that's been one um, sub that I've seen. And this one has worked in worsted weight yarn. The yarn featured is Be So Tender by Worsted Weight Organic Cotton. And I'm gonna show you another version of that that is knit in this beautiful and simple knit lace pattern. And we'll look again. And this one's done in the top third. So you'll see. that it gives us a smaller view in the front. But we've got these great sides that angle down and I really love the way that angles on a diagonal like that. You could tie this. I love tying the vests that have that top third armhole construction. You can see how fitted it actually looks when you do that. Okay, then you could also button, corset, tie, or pin, like we'll do right here. If anyone is interested in sharing this video today, you may have friends that like to knit and crochet vests that are intimidated by uh, projects that have fitting, that where this could be something to encourage your friends to step outside of their shawl making box and make something that actually fakes looking fitted but is really just a shawl with two armholes in it. If you have friends who just like to buy loose and drapey items like this but don't know how to style them, please consider sharing it with them because these styling tips that I'm sharing today are not just for knitting and crochet and yarn, they're for any type of layering piece that you have in your wardrobe or pieces that you see in the store and go, gosh, that's so cute, but I don't, wouldn't know how to wear it. So that's what this video is for, is to just show you how you can take things that you already have or take things that you like but don't know what to do with them and to show you how to use them. Okay, we've got one more vest to talk about today. And this one's done a little bit differently because this one actually is a sized vest. This one has raglan shaping in the top and it has a lace stitch pattern in the bottom, but I've added ties to the vest. There's ties on either side of the front and I'm gonna show you why. I'm not a super huge fan of buttons because I like the way corset tying looks better. I'm just gonna take me a second to adjust my top and probably don't have the right top on to do this, but that's okay. I think the contrast and color is gonna be really lovely for showing you what I mean. So when you have ties on a piece, obviously just tying it in a bow is super easy, right? So you've got this on, it's done. Now where you choose to put that tie is also important. You could put it down here. Right? You could put it down here and have something that has a lower V, which is sometimes really flattering too, and you could tie it right there. Now, what I want to show you next though is my favorite way to tie a vest, and that's to corset tie it. And now there's going to be two ways you can do that. You could corset tie it, and when I say corset tying, it's the same thing as shoelace tying. You're going to alternate one side to the other side. And the beauty of lace is that there's tons of little holes, so there's plenty of space to uh, work your ties. Oh, I wasn't paying attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> One more.
once you course it tie, sometimes you don't actually have to secure it. You could just leave it like that and not even tie it. How super cute is that? That blows away buttons, in my opinion. If you like buttons, there's nothing wrong with that either. I mean, buttons are fine. Uh, but I am just a huge fan of this. I love the way that looks. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to corset tie it in the other direction so you can see that you have another way to wear it yet again. So we're going to corset tie it, corset tie further down. Hi Peggy, hi Susan, thanks for watching. Corset tying is my favorite. Thank you, Susan. Okay, now corset tying further down. Almost gives you more of a waist. And again, when you're doing shaping like this, you're creating you're creating custom shaping and it it's custom not just based on your size but how you feel on a given day or what accessories you're wearing with it or what you're wearing underneath it I remember back in the early 90s when we used to wear things that corset tied back here or clipped back here that was one of my favorite ways to style things because on any given day my stomach may feel like I want it to be fit it or want it to be flowy and when you corset tie something you have the control over how tight or how loose you want it to be oh my god look at that look at how cute it looks I mean I love the corset tying up here but I love it down here too and maybe you wouldn't wear it over a top like this but I'm sure there's plenty of, out of shirts in your wardrobe that it would look cute over you could dress this up or dress this down depending on what color you chose um, this happens to be tropical hot coral in Be So Fine Yarn. This pattern actually will be released on my website later today. And when it does, I'll add that link into the video description as well. It takes between two and three balls of Be So Fine Yarn, depending on what size you make. And uh, I will try to get a uh, YouTube video together for how to make this one as well. There are videos for most of these other projects already. They are either embedded into the free pattern page or they're on my YouTube channel. Um, I will put as many links as I can into this video description. So when you watch the playback, make sure that you go to the video description box and I'll show you where all the free patterns are, where all the tutorial videos are, and where you can buy all of the yarns that are featured in each of them. And just remember that a portion of all of the sales of Kristen Amdahl Yarns supports Project Kristen Cares, which is my charity that helps survivors of domestic violence. If anyone has any questions, I'll stay on for a couple more minutes here. And if you want me to specifically point out anything on, your, um, on the vests, I am happy to help you in any way I can. I'm going to, uh, Yasmin, yes, I will definitely put a link to my YouTube channel. Just so you know, my name, Kristen Amdahl, is where you will find me anywhere. So my website, KristenAmdahl.com. My YouTube channel, Kristen Amdahl. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Ravelry, anywhere you're looking for me. If you just type in my whole name, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-O-M-D-A-H-L, you'll find me in any of those places because I go by my name to make it nice and easy. Let's see. Sandy, thank you. Carolina, is that cotton thin yarn? Um, which one are you talking about, Carolina? This, is, um, this one happens to be bamboo yarn. This is fingering weight bamboo, and this one took two balls of Be So Fine yarn. Um, several of the vests today were done in be so fine yarn so all three of these are bamboo and then the two that are worsted weight vests these are done in cotton and I think these are three balls of be so tender but I'll explain all of that in the links that I'll share with you later does anybody else have any questions
Oh, you're welcome, Elisa. I'm so happy to share these ideas. I think it's really important to know how to wear things more than one way. Uh, it just it really makes it, it expands your wardrobe. Anytime you can wear something more than one way, you have more than one piece in your closet. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to show you one more sneak peek. And please forgive me because it is not done, but I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of it anyway. This. Yeah, Alisa, I agree with you. I need 48 hours too. Uh, okay, so here's one of those 52 inch square uh, red bubble chiffon scarves that I um, that I make with my artwork. So this was my hand drawn artwork that I placed on this site, Red Bubble, and this is one of the scarves that I have made for me. And what I did with this. It used to be a 52 inch square. I cut down the center and added crochet trim along the whole thing. And because this fabric is so fine, a tiny crochet hook easily worked into this so you could crochet on fabric. And I'm creating a kimono out of it. You know those flowy kimonos you see in the store everywhere? Well, I'm going to be teaching you how to create a flowy kimono top using one of my red bubble scarves and some yarn. And it's not quite done yet because I still have to sew up this seam a little bit and I have some crochet flower motifs that I'm gonna use for joining. And so we're gonna have a sleeve here and we'll have a sleeve here. This is the first time I've tried it on, I'm so excited. And this is going to be a, kim a kimono. Isn't that gonna be gorgeous? Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to finish this one. This one I envision wearing with like a tank top and jeans. I pretty much wear jeans with everything. So jeans, I, if you wear other types of pants or skirts, just replace whenever I say jeans, replace it with whatever bottoms you prefer. But I think a tank top would be really cute so that you could see your arms through it because this is super sheer. Can you see how sheer this is? Oh, so anyway, there's a sneak peek of something coming really soon and that I'm really excited about. And because those are 52 inch square chiffon scarves, I'm going to show you how to do crochet and knitting on the edge to make them into multiple garments. Like this one's going to be the kimono cardigan. I'm also going to show you how to do a shrug and a couple of other things. So that's going to be really fun. You could do a poncho too. Just cut the hole in the center and not cut down the front like this one and it could be a poncho as well super easy so anyway those are some of the things coming soon uh, oh here's another piece coming soon have you seen this one this is a new pattern and new video coming soon where it's a super simple knit in the round sweater where I did this gorgeous shaping in the front and uh, Again, we need 48 hours in the day to get everything done, right? But those are some of the things that are coming soon. Anything else in here? Oh, yeah, but I can't show you any of that yet. Anyway, I don't think there are any more questions right now. Lots of compliments and thank you all so much for joining me this morning. And thank you so much for sharing with me and giving me your feedback. Um, it really helps me to teach better when I know what people are interested in learning so you know my door is always open please always feel welcome to ask me anything and I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon bye please subscribe to my channel for more videos